As a realtor, your image and reputation is everything, which is why making sure your profiles, images are updated, accurate, and reflect who you are as a professional is critical. At Remax Results, we've created a complimentary online audit to help you make sure that your online presence is an accurate reflection of you for your customers. So if you're interested in having this complimentary guide, shoot us an email, podcast at results.net. One I've been doing probably six years, and that's the Easter one. So all my clients come, their kids get the photos with the Easter bunny. Every year I get clients that ask me, are you going to do it? I think we've gotten the Easter bunny, you know, taken care of now. (laughs) Um, We've had a few mishaps with the Easter bunny. But, you know, it's all good. I want to hear. Let's share. (laughs) Hi, I'm here today with Amy Graffenstein from our Cambridge office. Amy, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me down here. You've been with Remax Results. Did I get that right? Is it 16 Mm -hmm. years? Mm -hmm. But you've been a realtor for 22 years. You have achieved the Remax Hall of Fame Career Award Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years back. Congrats on that. And you're on track for the next... I think it's the lifetime achievement. I was looking that up. Mm. So you've been a realtor for 22 years, but mm-hmm. you haven't always been at Remax. Where did you start out your real estate career? So I started in real estate October of 2001, right after the planes hit the tower. I actually had graduated from real estate school mm-hmm. that when the planes hit the tower, and then I wasn't able to get licensed because of the shutdown. And so I had to wait until they reopened. Okay, so that my first day on the job at Remax Results was September 10th, 2001. So second day, yeah, so Mm -hmm. yeah, isn't that interesting? Like you always remember. Yeah, I was a travel agent prior and I was at, we had an event going on and I was at our office and saw it on the Mm -hmm. TV and I was like, yeah, so I was still finishing up there and your travel agency how long were you a travel agent i don't even remember how many years that was okay it was a few i was a few years i was a legal secretary before that and then a travel agent and now real estate was the you know when you say travel agent i instantly go down the path of like the leisure leisure travel but but i also i'm thinking uh, are are they still around there i know Mm -hmm. i have some people still work with travel agents but Mm -hmm. it's kind of a dying breed um i'm just curious is that agency still around or do I don't you... think the agency itself is still all right um the gentleman who actually had that agency mm-hmm. um passed away mm-hmm. so I don't think his agency is still there okay. and I don't know when that whole agency ended yeah but did you get to travel a lot I did or what's the most exotic place you visited oh gosh I don't even know um <laughs> <laughs> because they send you. So if you're a travel agent, the destinations or the tour companies want you to come visit their so locations talk, so that you can yeah. talk about the locations and, and sell those out. So, that makes sense. yeah, so I traveled a few of them. Um, the one that I was going to go to and then I quit um, the travel agency was Ireland. So Ooh. I was going to go to Ireland. But then because I ended, I gave my spot to some my spot went to somebody else. Okay. So that would have been super fun. Yeah, I would have held out a little longer. And I know, I should have. <laughs> gone to Ireland uh-huh. and then. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Well, I really enjoyed getting to know you. And one thing that stands out that I that I see you do a lot of, and I'm, I'm assuming that's where a lot of your business comes from, is you do a lot of events. Uh, particularly, mm-hmm. you do a great job of promoting them on social media. So a lot of client appreciation events. Talk to me about that. I do. That. I love all my clients a lot. Yeah. Um, I have, I've started now, one I've been doing probably six years, and that's the Easter one. So all my clients come, um, we have the Easter bunny, they get their photos with the, their kids get the photos with the Easter bunny. Every year I get clients that ask me, are you going to do it? Are you still going to do it? Are you still going to do it? Um, I think we've gotten the Easter bunny, um, you know, taken care of now. (laughs) Um, We've had a few mishaps with the Easter bunny, but you know, it's all good. I want to hear, let's share (laughs) Easter bunny. (laughs) Well, the Easter bunny, because you're in a costume. So like, If you're claustrophobic, like I had one person that was claustrophobic and the person wearing the costume. Yeah. He didn't know he was going to react that bad. Okay. And he sat down and the kids are coming in their door and like literally five minutes before we start, he's like heads off. He's like sitting there. I'm like, don't, 
take your head off with all these people already <laughs> here, you know? So Easter Bunny gone gone wild. Yeah, so okay. the Easter Bunny, he couldn't do it. And, um, you know, my amazing husband stepped in and... I was going like, to say, who volunteered? All right, he didn't all right. get a volunteer. I said, uh, this person can't do it, so please, I need you to do this. And he did, and he did a great job of it. So we've had a few different ones um, be the Easter Bunny. So Chris Johnson out of the Cambridge office... Um, Yep. Her significant other, John, did it um, for a few years. Um, my husband's done it. Now we have a guy who absolutely, his name is Jeremy, and he loves it. He did it last year, and he'll do it for us again now so continuously. But we do that every year, and the families love it because they don't have to stand in the line. Mm-hmm. You know, they come. If their kids are a little uptight or unsure, mm-hmm. we have food for them, so they kind of have food. They can watch see what's going on, warm up to the Easter Bunny, yeah. and then do it. And then, you know, we give them a gift when they leave. Oh, that's nice. So we do that one. And then last two years now, I have done um, mini golf in September. So okay. there's a mini golf place in Cambridge, and we um, ha- hold it there. And so they get to come with their families. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, once everybody goes back to school, we kind of do it. And that way they, you know, it's kind of a family event when everybody's getting back on track with the nice. school year. And then you also... You're doing something. You're making you're making stuff around Christmas time. I do. I, you, there's there's always something. Oh, you're talking about the elf. You're talking yeah. So how many? So how, seriously, how many of these events are you doing a year? Well, the elf, um, the Christmas, I is a. I mean, I'm always dropping stuff off. Mm-hmm. Yes, I dropped stuff off yesterday. Like pop um, pop by yep. with your. Yep, I'm clients. always. And so around okay. Christmas time, that's what it is. Okay. Um, I dress up as a Christmas elf. And the elf um, delivers all the gifts and all the, um, sometimes it's wreaths, sometimes it's ornaments. It's, it yeah. varies every year, but okay. yes, that's the Christmas one is the elf and everybody that's looks good. forward to the elf too. And I usually, um, one year, some families were actually holding their Christmas during the time I was doing this. So they all made, you know, had me come in and they oh. all wanted to, you know, yeah, that's nice. take photos and everything else. But and what's the Thanksgiving event that you do? So the Thanksgiving that I did, I've done that in the past. Um, it kind of varies if I do it. It's not one that I do every year, but I do do event, different events every year, just not the same ones. Um, but the Thanksgiving one that sometimes comes up is everybody does the pie party. It's known for real estate. Everybody does the pie party for Thanksgiving. And I actually took it as I invited the people into my house. So mm-hmm. I sent them an invite told them, you know, you have been so gracious to have me into your homes because whether you were buying or selling, I was invited into your home and I wanted to return the favor. And so I invited them into my home. Mm -hmm. So they got to come and, um, you know, have some food and then left with a pie when they left. So it was nice. It was very, of all the events that I've done, that is probably one of my favorites Okay, because of the intimacy. Yeah. It's just intimate having... You're not having all the chaos all over on all the, you know, on some of them that you get. And at this one is just you and them intimate. It, it was great. It was a great event just having them at my house. So what advice do you have for um, other realtors who maybe don't do enough of these client appreciation events or maybe are just getting started because quite a few of them don't, but really right. want to? What's your advice? Like what mistakes have you made along the way? Yeah, I mean, I remember the, when I first did it and it, you are terrified to do it because you you envision what it's going to be in your head. And if it doesn't work out that way, you know, you're, it's a disaster. Or you are worried that you're going to spend this money and you're only going to get a couple people that are going to show up. Mm-hmm. When you have less people, it's more, you're more intimate with them. You can have more conversations with them, more one-on-one time with them. With the ones who did show then up. Then yeah. don't worry about the ones that didn't show. Mm-hmm. Focus on the ones that, that showed up and supported you and, Next, you know, do it again and again and again, and you're just going to keep growing mm-hmm. how many people are coming. And, and find an event that that your community likes or that you feel. I always try to do one with the kids and one without kids. Oh, that's a good idea. Because there are a bunch of families that they don't have kids. Like, they're not going to c- probably come to an Easter event yep. if they don't have kids. Where True. if you do an event that is just for them, you know, mm-hmm. that's the one thing with my Thanksgiving. It was just the adults that came. Mm-hmm. You know, the kids didn't come. And so that was one of okay. the nice things with that, too. Aside from the um, <laughs> claustrophobic bunny suit. <laughs> yeah, except for that bunny suit. Are that, there any other uh, uh, snafus that maybe you learned from that you want to share? You know, there are 
there's always I always have you know more than enough <laughs> food and candy for everybody and um, on those and there's not really anything that's been a huge I mean that would be you know yeah. that that's the one I worry about the most is the Easter one because of the bunny but I think <laughs> I got I think I got the bunny under under control now. I thought you were about to say <clears throat> there was this St. Patrick's Day one day. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no, it would just be that that bunny one was probably the biggest one when the kids were there and. Luckily, nobody was in line when he took his head off and, you know. I love that. And you've been doing these events, you said, for how many years? Uh, you said seven years? I would or? say that I've been doing them for probably seven, six, seven years, different ones. And are they growing? Mm-hmm. Yes. The attendance. And now people ask you about them. And, yes. Yep. And how do you usually they promote do. them? They um, do. When I'm promoting them, a lot of them are just um, client-based. And when I doing just client-based, they all get um, an invite sent to them. We usually do a video that gets sent to them. We follow up with them to make sure that they're, you know, see if they're coming. Mm-hmm. I try to RSVP them so that wanna, if they're, if it is an event where the kids are coming, especially the Easter, I want to make sure there's enough Easter mm-hmm. baskets because each child leaves with an Easter basket when they come to the Easter one. Have you ever had an event where it's bring a friend or bring someone that you know? I have not, that but I know considering... that's, that's like the big thing. Yeah. Like, bring... But I have had um, somebody, I didn't tell them, but I did have somebody invite somebody to the Easter. Mm-hmm. So, and I'll get a lot of times on the Easter, somebody will text me and say, hey, can my cousin come with their kids or can my, you know, a relative come with their kids or can my family come with and I always say yes Mm -hmm. like I don't ever I haven't just opened it up Mm -hmm. because I think that that would take away for why the client likes it yeah especially the Easter one but I am very open if they bring somebody with Mm -hmm. them Mm -hmm. potential future clients exactly regarding the services you provide Mm -hmm. um, for our listeners what what are you most known for you know, this, don't know you. the thing is, is that I, I guess if I, if somebody, what everybody always says is I'm a huge note taker. I will personal note. I write over 1200 notes a year, wow. personal notes that go out okay. to my clients. Um, my clients get birthday cards. They get home anniversary cards. They get wedding cards. Mm-hmm. They get just random cards. Um, and everybody loves receiving. Cards. Yes. Yeah. So I, I do the cards and I deliver the gifts, but I would say the cards is... You know, if I don't do those, then I, I, so today, I'm hard on myself if I'm not doing the cards. After this interview them. and you go back to your office today, how many note cards are you going to fill out? You know, I have, um, I have a birthday gift card I have to stop and pick up because I have <laughs> their birthday card is sitting on my desk waiting to go out. Um, but usually I do it at the end of the month. So okay. at the end of the month, I write all of my birthday and anniversary cards for the entire month. Mm, mm-hmm. And then they sit there with the date on them and then I mail them as I go. So okay. the end of the month. So now... Um, I always write them at the end of the month and yeah. so that they're ready to go for the whole month. Um, and then every day I try to write like five or so a day okay. of just random. It's kind of every day is different. It depends what, what happens in the real estate world that you or want to write you, a note about. Yeah. Do you use social media to get ideas sometimes? To... Um, sometimes mm-hmm. if there's an event or a holiday or something mm-hmm. else, I'll do it that way as well. So you have or I'll stock them on social media. Yeah, yeah. I do. I stock my clients on social media and then I'll call them and I'll write them a note. It's kind of a CRM system. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see if they have a new dog or... Exactly. um, Yeah. So so you have have systems, but uh, that's a perfect segue to recently you were a panelist on a Remax Results. We call it the Ultimate Results uh, Mm -hmm. quarterly event. Mm -hmm. And that's where we feature our agents on panels. And the topic of that Ultimate Results... Um, was all about CRMs, mm-hmm. and we had um, I don't know how many panelists we have about five or six yeah five or six panelists, and every panelist uh, uses a different CRM. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a really a great ultimate results session, and mm-hmm. we had someone talking about Chime and follow up boss and Google Suite, and mm-hmm. what was your topic? mine was referral maker by oh, with Brian Buffini, Buffini. Yep. Brian referral Buffini's maker referral maker yeah okay. I'll see our. our a CRM is great. It's just a matter of who, which one you're going to use. And as long as you're going to use it, that's what matters. Yeah. You know, there's people that still handwrite everything or use it on Excel. I mean, that's their CRM. It works yeah. for them. And know. if anyone listening to the show, I'm going to segue, wants a copy of that episode of our ultimate mm-hmm. results with everyone talking about the different CRMs and why they use them and mm-hmm. what, what their choice is. 
Um, just send an email to podcast at results.net and we'll, we'll get a copy of that episode um, out to you. But so the, um, so the referral maker, that makes sense because you're talking about your Buffini, your Popeyes, mm-hmm. and how long have you been using um, that system? Um, I would say that overall system has probably been about seven years at least. Oh, for quite a while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. was coaching with Buffini and that was for five years. Mm-hmm. And I had it, I think, a couple of years before that. And I think I've been out of that coaching for about a year. So somewhere in between. Have that. you worked with any other coaches or are you? Uh, currently I am. Okay. Yes. I kind of, I love Buffini. I have nothing against them. I have nothing against any of the coaching. Um, all coaching is good. They're all good. It's all good. You have to invest in yourself. Yep. And I just needed something different and I didn't quite know what it was. Mm -hmm. And I kind of researched some different ones and went, you know, what am I going to use? And so I actually went with one that is fully a lot of marketing. Okay. A lot of videos. You'll see a lot of videos on my um, Facebook right now from them. Um, and it's actually Krista Mayshore coaching. Okay. Talk so, a little bit. I'm, I'm not familiar. That's yeah. A it, bit she, about. you know, I kind of was trying to figure out where There's I wanted to go of, and what I wanted to do. No coaches either. No. And she's a realtor out of California. Okay. So it's not just the one thing I wanted was I wanted a coach who was still a real estate person. Mm-hmm. You know, so many of them start in real estate and then they get so big that they don't do that part of it anymore. Yes. So that's what intrigued me with this one. Is it what's was her, still? I'm sorry. What's her name again? Uh, it's Krista Mayshore. Krista Mayshore. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yep, she's Krista an active Mayshore realtor in, yep. on the West Coast. Yep. She was a teacher, and then she was um, real estate, and now she's incorporating the coaching part of it. Mm-hmm. She has more of the coaching than the real estate, but she has a whole real estate group and everything else. So. What do you like most about working with her so far? It's very hands on, and it's um, very. Like every day there's something. Mm -hmm. It's not just like you have a coach that you're talking to once a month or once every other week. There's daily activities and there's daily accountability. Okay. Awesome. And when did you start using her? Um, September. Okay. Just this last September of 22. I'm just kidding. I know. (laughs) I'm going to track my production because I want to know how this is going to go. I'm going to see how this works for you. You If anything, I'm going to be great on video after that. So we'll see. Oh, that's cool. It's all about the editing. That's all I know. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so is there anything that this, with this new coach, um, Krista, or uh, has she gotten you to do something that maybe you weren't doing before that, you know, you oh, the needed? videos, the, the video, videos, 100%. Okay. Like I knew, like that was my biggest thing. Like I know the social media is where everything is going right now. Mm-hmm. And I know that the videos are going to, you're going to watch a video way more than you're just going to look at a photo. Mm-hmm. And so that is what I wanted. Like I thought I was signing up for a video some big intense video class mm-hmm. and it was way much more. So <laughs> I'm really? getting way more than just, you know, okay. the video part of it. So And you're doing um, reels on Insta, are you doing TikTok, YouTube? No, face, we're just, just starting Facebook like, live. Yeah. Okay. Like I'm just at the beginning stages of this okay. part. Like you like there's a lot of training that goes before you even post a video. Mm-hmm. And it's a matter of knowing how to post them and and how to run the ads behind them and to make them effective. A request that uh, the marketing team at Remax Results is getting more and more these days is video editing services. Mm-hmm. Like everybody can take the videos, mm-hmm. but they want to be able to yeah. go whoop, and send them off to someone yep. and do the editing and send it back so they can post. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's uh, there are services out yes, there. Yes, there are there. services that do that. Mm-hmm. When I first started this coaching, the first 10 vo- videos that we shot were all edited for us. Nice. And then, you know, it's green screen. Like I have the whole green screen, the the lighting, the whole nine yards at my house right now. Wow. Um, and then you sent the green screen. I mean, they script them for you and you kind of change them to make them sound like you. And then you... Okay. You know, get them recorded and they're edited and everything else and they come back beautiful. And then nice. you, you know, thumbnail them and everything else. But after that, then it's, you know, you're trying to figure out who you want to edit your videos. So I, um, I got a request from somebody that wanted to do some of mine. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you keep getting those. And I found somebody that actually is great and he's, he's doing a fabulous job on them. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, yeah, some of the video editing, uh, companies, that exist. Um, I think there's going to be more. I think it's mostly freelance people that are mm-hmm. out there, yep. younger, um, Absolutely. that you can just pay a flat monthly fee to, and then you and for ten videos a month, for example, and you can yeah. them off. Yep. And, yeah, yeah. Um, I good for you. Yeah, I've watched actually recently watched a couple of videos on video 
on editing, mm -hmm. like how to do it. And I decided I'm gladly pay the video editor because <laughs> that is just not my you cup of tea by any yeah, means. You should be out there knocking on yeah, doors. No. And yeah, I was like, eyes. I'm not doing this. Yeah. Let's talk about goals. Do you have any big goals for, for this year for 2024 or maybe two, three years out? I know you want to increase your production number, um, but mm -hmm. anything outside of, you know, obviously selling more real estate, do you have uh, maybe any personal goals or do you have any... Um, you have your video goals. Right. You know, I have the videos, but and then mm -hmm. it's, you know, honestly, I would love to get the cabin done one of these years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we're working on that thing, you know, and we're just working on it ourselves. And yeah. as it, you know, it's not, it, I feel like that thing has been going for four years now. And <laughs> it's never done. <laughs> it's never done, but it'll get there. It's, it, you know, it's, it's fun to work on it and it's fun to work on it together. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I have really any have a couple homes, one in, you know, somewhere warm other than this mm -hmm. nice state. I can't complain about the state this year. This I'm, year? No. No, mm -hmm. I'm perfect. I could, Excuse me. every winter could be just like this, mm -hmm. in, my, in my opinion. Along the way, um, who was, would you say was maybe most influential to you in your real estate career that you'd love to give thanks to, honor, you know? There's probably two. Like, obviously my husband is super mm -hmm. supportive. Um, you know, I was married before. And so this husband, my current husband mm -hmm. is a hundred times more supportive. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is definitely a rock. We talk about a lot of things and, you know, he gives me ideas and everything else. And mm -hmm. my business, um, doubled and tripled once I, once I found him. So, mm -hmm. um, that was great. That's wonderful. And you know, when I got started, Chris Johnson in our office and I've known her for years. And honestly, if she wouldn't have given me the time, I wouldn't be here because I didn't want to start just to start. Mm -hmm. And she, mentored she you. let me come in under her. Oh, so I didn't know that. Yeah, I started actually under her for a short time the there. <laughs> and, you know, and then um, so I would give it's absolutely her. You know, if she wouldn't have said, yes, come in and I'll I'll take you. I mean, I was under there for a short time and then mm -hmm. um, but that I because I didn't want to just be, you know, thrown in like they say. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say that would be the one. Yeah, that's you, you have a greater uh, chance of success uh, uh, mentoring. Or mm -hmm. A lot of people start out on teams yeah. and then eventually yeah. go independent. Yeah, and we become great friends and we do a lot of stuff outside of, you know, mm -hmm. work-related and, and everything now. So, I mean, it's she's, she's a great person. Well, thank you, Chris Johnson, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've enjoyed having you on the show, Amy. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.